Should you update to Windows 11? I get asked this question all the time, and this video will answer it for you. Uh, and I'm not just going to regurgitate some article that you see online that just, uh, you know, takes Microsoft's talking points about Windows 11 and just says, hey, it's so much better. It's more secure. It's faster. It's all these things. Spoiler, none of what I just said is true. <laughs> or there's a very small shred of truth to those statements. Let's get on the desktop though. It's not, uh, I'm not saying don't update to Windows 11 because there is some really cool factors, but there's really only one in my mind that makes the big difference. And the big thing is the look. The look of Windows 11 is the thing I like about it. If you don't like Windows 11 look, you really shouldn't update. So we look at this, um, I kinda, the center taskbar is not really that big a deal. You can always go taskbar settings and push your home to the left if you're one of those people that like, hey, I have to have it on the left. I honestly don't care if it's in the center or on the left. The other things are the actual look of the windows. Now, I think I've been messing around with mine, but usually you get a nice little curved window and uh, some task view settings up here for snapping. I don't really ever use this because I'm kind of a hotkey junkie, so I'll, I'll just do this and push them up and down uh, using you know, just the standard hold windows and press left, right. Like you do in windows 10 hovering over this to do a snap. I guess it kind of cool to do just a certain uh, degree of snapping, but I don't know. It's it, it, very gimmicky in my opinion, but there's some use there. So maybe that's for you or not. Uh, the next thing is the performance. Uh, when we pull up the performance of windows 10, I would say, um, I've obviously optimized this already using my, my uh, toolkit, but I, I would say it's a little bit heavier than Windows 10, meaning you get pretty much a little bit worse performance, but very marginal, probably five or 10% uh, either direction, depending on the hardware you're using, uh, the acceleration, those types of things. Uh, you could probably see maybe a little bit better performance, but also you could see a little bit worse performance with an older machine. So that's kind of what you should be thinking about with Windows 11. Performance is kind of a moot point. Another big selling point to Windows 11 is security enhancements. And really uh, what they did here was made a marketing ploy for secure boot and TPM. And this is how you would boot into a system and that will secure that startup process, which it does make that more secure. But the problem with that is Windows is so insecure because there's an exploit, or I'd consider an exploit, or maybe maybe Microsoft just calls it a feature, but the SAM files, uh, when you don't encrypt, like you can do a full BitLocker encryption on your dr dr drive that will make it a lot more secure, uh, but it's kind of a pain in the butt. Sometimes updates cause it to go into a, a basically a BitLocker lock mode, and you have to look up a key to log even into your system. It's a whole nightmare and that BitLocker key is associated with your Microsoft account. So uh, I'm not a huge BitLocker fan. And if you don't use BitLocker, I would say it's just as insecure as Windows 10 because you could easily just load up a password crack tool and, and unlock the admin, local admin account and log in and copy any files you wanted from any Windows box. Uh, you set a person in front of a Windows box, they're going to get into it if uh, they have above a room temperature IQ. So... That's my thoughts on the security process of Windows 11. I think if you're really concerned about security, I would say the security is better as long as you use the BitLocker and you use all these other security metrics with Windows 11. Uh, it would secure the system down a bit more than Windows 10, but most people aren't going to want to use that stuff for obvious drawbacks. And then next up, we have our widgets on the left side. Now you can sign into your Microsoft account and they'll sync all these widgets to the left. You can have your news and other stuff. Uh, to me, this is just kind of laughable. Uh, I, I went ahead and usually I remove these buttons uh, as I think this kind of reminds me of Vista sidebar from like 15 years ago. Maybe that guy never got fired <laughs> and they kept them on. And he's like, hey, let's just recycle this idea from 13 years ago that really no one liked. Or maybe a few people like the widgets in Vista, but uh, it's kind of reminiscent of that. It's what it kind of reminds me of. And uh, again, gimmicky, probably a few people might use it, but I personally just come into my taskbar settings and come into here and go, okay, turn off these widgets. I, I don't want that hovering over my bar uh, every time I 
move over it with my mouse button. It's just kind of annoying. The other thing is more collaborative tools, which is just fancy speak for it. it has Microsoft Teams basically baked in, which that's this button right here. I, and yeah, again, I'm not a huge Teams fan. Most of the business world runs on Zoom and um, other things other than Teams. Occasionally, there's a couple businesses that try to adopt it. But again, I'm not a huge fan of Microsoft Teams. If you are, its integration's pretty tight in Windows 11, but that's also can be a downside if you don't want uh, Teams on your system and you're not using Teams for your business. It's kind of a, a crappy addition, just more more junk to unload. So you probably see me clicking around in here and you'll notice the taskbar settings. Yeah, it's the context menus in Windows 11 is the first thing, so why you shouldn't upgrade. It's probably the most annoying thing, frankly, is they changed the framework for the whole taskbar down here to be something called UWP. And it's just far less functional than the Windows 10 taskbar. I thought Windows 10 did a pretty good job with taskbar. I love the task manager being right here. So if my keyboard died or something, I could right click and, and launch into the task manager and at least shut down my PC and some basic functionality. But that's gone. All you get is taskbar settings, which just takes you into the new settings menu. The settings menu is very reminiscent of Windows 10. I think it's a little more cohesive. So I got to say, I kind of like the settings menu in Windows 11 better than Windows 10 as Windows 10 kind of felt like a weird mesh between 7 and Metro, if they had a, like a, a bastard child. <laughs> That's kind of what Windows 10 settings did. So a little bit better in this regard. Uh, and then you get into some other things I really hate is when you're in here and you go to a right-click menu. They redid this, which I really don't like this. A lot of times I find myself going, you know what, I need another option from a context menu. And I say show more, and then I get the old context menu. Again, I'm going to try and find exactly what they did in the registry and add this to my my tool, my tweak tool for Windows 11 PCs because I really miss this version and having it always default to this new, I guess, cool looking version, I, I don't really like. So, and having the copy paste and delete uh, icons, again, to each his own. Some people like the aesthetic. I personally like the functionality. I'm, I'm definitely a function over style kind of guy. Now, one other downside is some of the default apps. Uh, I, I did find that they're getting better with this. When Windows 11 first came out, this was something that was just awful, uh, trying to switch like your internet app. So if I want to switch and make Brave my default internet app for all of the you know plugins it can use, like PDF, I can switch. Brave, okay. All right, SVG, switch, Brave, okay. WebP files, we could switch that over to Brave. It, you know, so on and so forth. But man, having to go through each one of these is not a great experience. This is one of the downsides. And I bet someone will create an app or maybe an app already exists that I don't know about that does all these defaults. But as it is right now, Windows 11 is a bit of a step down from Windows 10 on default apps. So is this worth switching from Windows 10 to Windows 11? For me, honestly, I really like the new look of Windows 11. So my answer is yes, because of the look. But if I didn't care about the look and I was fine with Windows 10, there'd be no purpose of upgrading to Windows 11. Uh, you still have support for you know another three years until 2025. And then at that point, you need to switch to Windows 11 because it'll be end of life and you'll start to run into compatibility issues. But everything right now is still made with Windows 10 in mind. And it'll probably be another year or two before Windows 11 starts to pull ahead in just, you know, market share of Windows 10. And that's going to be the time you have to switch. You know, at that point in time, you're starting to really hold yourself back by staying with Windows 10. That time's not here yet. So it's really all about you and what you want to do. Now, as far as switching to Windows 11 and not meeting the requirements, that's the one downside. Maybe you can't switch because you have an older PC. Honestly, Microsoft has kind of laughably made their own how-to article in this, which is, check this out, it's pretty funny. So the easiest way to do it is just a what's called a bypass registry hack. And all you do is hit Shift F10 from here, uh, scroll down, type regedit, go into setup, create a new key called Mo Setup. This one actually has lab config, but Microsoft actually has since updated this instead of lab config, which lab config still works. 
but you can actually do mo setup and i think it probably down here towards the bottom i think it'll show it yeah right here the microsoft way is the official bypass uh, so you have the lab config way and this way you can actually do both if you really want to make sure you're bypassing it but you just create the most setup key and then allow upgrades with unsupported tpm or cpu at one hit okay and then just continue on with your setup and you can install it on an older device if you're interested leave me a comment down below because I will put that in my tool toolbox. So if you are on an older PC and you're like, you know what, this PC is still pretty beefy, you know, maybe it's a seventh gen Intel, or maybe it's a first gen Ryzen that still has a good bit of horsepower. And you're like, you know what, I'm, I'm okay moving to Windows 11. I want that look. Uh, you could actually just take my toolbox and I'll make a little tick box for you. And you just, it'll add all those keys. And that way, when you just click install Windows 11 through the official Microsoft way, it'll go, oh yeah, this one meets every requirement, even though it just bypasses it. So it's neat to see Microsoft relax those because I thought it was silly that you couldn't use like a seventh gen Intel or a first gen Ryzen uh, because there's nothing wrong with those systems. They're still very good and just adding to e-waste, but it, it, they Microsoft definitely relaxed those requirements and very easy to bypass these days. So with that, let me know if you want to see that in the toolbox and I will see you in the next one.